Hello, welcome to Hunter Gatherer Cooking. I'm at Tara and Neil's house today in London, and as you can see behind me, I'm going to be using the Charlie ovens today. I've done a little bit with them uh, over the years, met up with them at shows and things, but I've never actually used one. So today we're going to start from scratch and we're going to cook some venison shanks. Hi there, I'm Tara, and this is Neil. And we are the owners of Charlie Oven, and we're here today with Alex in the garden. And it's January, and we're going to be cooking with the Charlie Oven. Let me show you it. This is an outdoor charcoal oven that does, well, pretty much anything and everything. It's a pizza oven, it's a barbecue, it's a grill, it's a smoker, it's a bread oven. It's an oven. Huge capacity, huge versatility, really, really, really easy to use. And today we've got some magnificent ingredients that we're going to be cooking. Uh, venison that uh, Alex tells me shot in Scotland. Look at that. It looks absolutely delicious and I can't wait to get going. So the Charlie oven comes in three sizes. We've got the cheeky Charlie here which is the tabletop version of the oven. So it can either fit on our lovely stand here or you can fit it into your outdoor kitchen or just on a table. But it's a really good size for cooking. Then we have, as Neil just showed, the full size Charlie oven which is great because you can just wheel it about and um, it's for use all year round, so it's really handy that you can just wheel it about wherever you need. Um, now you can have an instant outdoor kitchen by adding one of our island units, um, which has really deep capacity for all the things that you might want to have outside and it will keep them lovely and dry, including lots of space for some of the implements that you use. Oh, and I forgot to say, we do a professional version of the oven because this style of cooking actually comes from restaurants. And we have another version which is bigger, heavier duty and perfect for chefs who will put, test things to the max. Neil's going to help me, help me light the fire. What okay. are we using here? We are using Whittle and Flay. How much am I Just doing? Just keep it in. Like perfect, that. perfect. Okay, now, a pair of tongs. Any little bits of charcoal that are making a bit for freedom around the outside. So what's the idea? You're making a pile? Making a little pile. Like that? So yeah, that's gonna last that's gonna last a long time. Okay, now, next stage. We get the trusty blowtorch. You can either use a blowtorch, Alex, or you can use a fire lighter. But I thought a manly fellow like you would prefer the rugged way of doing it. So open the vents. How? Pull it out like that. Pull it out as far as it'll go. Yeah. Top one as well. As far as it'll go. Top one as well. There we are, sir. Right. And that draws the oven, uh, the air up through the oven. And then so what? Just just hit it with a blowtorch. Just move it around. Keep it going until we've got a nice bit of glow somewhere at the bottom. I mean, having yeah, never yeah, used a okay. couple of places, I've never used a blowtorch. Don't you feel more manly? I mean, look at that. It's a lot quicker. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Just hit the other side a little bit as well. Just to get it going. Okay. That'll do, switch off the blowtorch. That's, that's it, is it? Yeah, yeah that's it, switch wow. off the blowtorch. That's it, shut the door. And that's it? That's it. That's it. And Done. Vents, it. vents fully open? Vents are open. And we'll come back in about 15 minutes and we'll see that the thing's well up to temperature. Wow. You know, you were asking about the vents, Alex. Yeah. It's a very, very simple piece of engineering. It is a hole, it's a vent. There's one at the top and one at the bottom, and that's what makes it act like a chimney. You know, with some other devices, you need to start the charcoal going in a chimney. This is a chimney in itself, as well as an oven. So let's have a look at it. There's only three settings, closed, yeah, which you can see, open, which you can see, and Tara coming close. <laughs> partly open with your fingers behind it, okay? So you'll see there, there is a little sliver and I guess of you, space you, there. You get used to exactly what that yeah. feels like. It, exactly. So the way that that works is those three settings correspond to the three different uh, ways that we can use the oven. Open is heating up, closed is cooling down. Just like that, tiny bit open, is temperature hold. But there are other things that are make Charlie really, really uh, energy efficient and uh, great to cook with and easy to cook with. So one of the things is the seal on the door is an industrial silicon seal and this gives you a fantastic airtight um, uh, closure and then the rest of the oven is all completely airtight. So what does a fire need to um, to light, it needs oxygen. So if you can control the oxygen that goes inside the oven by having it airtight, uh, you can control the temperature really, really efficiently. The other thing is it doesn't get hot on the outside. 
at, at all, even when you're cooking, even doing pizzas. It'll get warm, but it, it's still fine to touch. And that's because it's got a thick layer of stainless steel on the inside, which doesn't like to conduct the heat that much. And it also has a very thick layer of ceramic wool insulation. And that's what keeps it all the heat inside the oven, all the smoke and all the flavour. They're all made in Britain in our lovely factory in Nottingham, where we do all the manufacturing the fabrication, the powder coating, all of the welding and assembly. All of the steel on the outside of the oven here is stainless. All of these components, the hinges, the vent pulls, the handle, are milled from solid blocks of stainless steel. This handle on its own weighs two kilograms. It's lovely to use. It's got that real sort of luxury car, car door clunk feel when you use it. Alex, we lit that 15 minutes ago and now we're up to 150, which is where we want to be for cooking our venison. And what we're going to do for a bit of extra je ne sais quoi is to put some wood in with it to get that smokiness. Up against the front of that. Like that? Yeah, yeah just like that. OK, shut the door and now we're going to set the temperature. Put both the vents in to one knuckle behind it. That's it. That's like the that. boy, exactly. And yep. both of them? Yep, both of them. I'll get that one. Yep, both of them. That's it, and that'll hold. That temperature now stop climbing, it'll hold. Poor bugger only had three legs. Really? Mm -hmm. That's why we shot him. Right. Yeah. Sounds bad, doesn't yeah, it? That's sounds bad. Yeah, that's right. You just thought we'd gone to the home for retired deer. Yeah. Something like that. Sitting well, this is, this is like the home for retired deer. <laughs> it is, yeah. You can see from the smoke coming out that that wood is giving it that real little bit of extra smokiness. So all we'll do is we're going to pull this top rack out a bit. Where do you want them? Wherever you like, sir. Is it best to like that? Yeah, yeah. lovely. Look at that, absolutely fabulous. And then just going to push that back in. You'll see the wood is flaming like it often does, so I'm just going to take it to one side here because we want the wood always for flavour, not for heat. Oh, oh look I at say, that. look at that. Absolutely fabulous. Oh, we've got some lovely bay leaf, um, which has kind of added some flavour. And Alex doing his thing. A little bit of love logs, apple wood. Mm. So, in goes the meat. I've oiled that and seasoned it first. Add a little bit of olive oil. And we're just going to add some veg. Just going to give that a little... Thanks, Neil. Lost his leg. It's lost Again, his leg. another one. Okay, and that can go back in. Oh, Alright, whoa, that's nice. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna add some juniper berries and some um, what are they called? Cumin seeds? No, they're not cumin seeds, they're something else. They'll come back to me. Car Caraway. Yeah, caraway seeds. So you got a kind of a really nice flavour and then just adding some herbs. We've got some rosemary and um, a couple of uh, nice bay leaves. And then we're gonna add our stock. Now, and what we wanna do is just place the um, the two... Uh, haunches. Haunches. Are they haunches? No. Uh, uh, shanks. 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 Wrap this with tin foil. Yeah. Wrap it around it. Here we are, a few hours later, the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. Oh, look at that. Look at that, the charcoal still smouldering away hours later. Look at that. That, oh, that does look really Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Fan dabba doozy, and that it's quite is just loose. coming it's not off bad. the bone. Yeah, that isn't bad that at all. Is... Well, the venison we think is cooked, but after putting it in the oven, in the last half an hour, Storm Isha has swept in. I'm just going outside. 
by maybe some time. And with that, he walked out into the blizzard and was never seen again. Hopefully that's not gonna to happen to me, but there is an amber weather warning, so who bloody knows? You're in the wrong job. <laughs> My clients keep telling me that. Oh. We, we just put some um, greaseproof paper on. Oh my God, look at that. We took it off the bone. Let's have a look. It's not, that's better, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. That looks superb. And it's got a lovely amount of gravy onto there as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, hit that subscribe button, like and drop me a comment or any questions and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. I'll see you for the next video.